You're tuned into Life is a Sacred Journey. Every week, we bring a new perspective to aging and caregiving. Here is your host, Michelle Pope. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Life is a Sacred Journey. I am your host, Michelle Pope. I'm here every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Sometimes we, I have to go out of town and we play some stuff that we've done in the past. I want to thank all of you in the virtual neighborhood of Life is a Sacred Journey. You're from all over the world. So mm, to my family in Moldova, mm, to my family in Africa and Brussels and all of you folks across the pond, um, thank you for joining us here at Life is a Sacred Journey. And then all of you who are in my local neighborhood, thank you for joining us at Life is a Sacred Journey. This morning, as you know, I believe... um, in knowledge, right? You know, life is a sacred journey. A part of our platform, of course, is to walk with caregivers because I feel that's very important to walk with caregivers, to bring my life experience here at Alzheimer's Services to caregivers. That's one real mighty platform. So that's one uh, block that we live on. The other block that we live on is this block of knowledge. Everybody who knows me knows that I'm a lifelong learner. Anytime I can take a class of something that interests me, anytime I can be with younger people and they give me all that stuff and I have to go and look and figure it all out, I am, my soul just starts to be so happy. I start to vibrate on a whole nother level. And and this morning, I had no idea Reverend Dr. Craig Wright was coming uh, until Felicia sent me, you know, as she always does as a great producer and content manager. uh, She sends me this and I'm looking at it. And then I get this email from Dr. Wright that says, you are an old soul. And you are a person that serves and please be careful because you will serve till you drop. That's not his words, but that's basically what he told me. (laughs) He is the third person who I have met in my life. I told you I I met a sage in, in Bali who told me the very same thing. And that's 2016. I met a man in Cuba in 2015, going into 2016, told me the same thing. And now here we are in 2022 and Reverend Dr. Craig Wright sends me an email sight unseen, except for my birthday and tells me the same thing. Now, I was feeling some kind of way when I saw the word numerology, okay? I'm just, uh, we're gonna be honest. You know, I don't play with you here. And I was like, okay, what is that all about? Because I've heard numerology called a cult. Just like I've heard, uh, 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 what do you call it? The signs, like I'm a Taurus. Like if you go, uh, whatever that's called, astrology. I've heard that's a cult. But then when I began to look at Reverend Dr. Craig's right uh, bio, I began to understand and open my heart a little bit and began to look and see exactly what numerology is. And I'm, I'm so happy, uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Craig Wright, that you are here this morning because I think sometimes we're told things and they become the construct of our whole entire being and then hold us back from learning new things because we think that someone's trying to rob us of what we, what, what like the foundation, like nobody can rob me from the foundation of my faith but that doesn't mean I can't learn new things. So let me tell my audience, our family, who you have now joined, the Life is a Sacred Journey family, a little bit about you. So give me a minute. I'm gonna look down a minute, folks, because I couldn't remember all of this. All right, so just give me a minute. So Reverend Dr. Craig Wright is a native of Baltimore, Maryland, where he studied religion and philosophy in his youth as a member of the Baltimore Ethical Society. He holds degrees in psychology and uh, metaphysics. He is an ordained metaphysical minister and a certified metaphysical practitioner. It it was a tragic death of a friend in the summer of 1972 that prompted uh, Reverend Dr. Craig Wright to search for the meaning of life. Wow, right? Aren't we all searching for the meaning of life? I know I am. And the truth. I'm always looking for the truth. And... um, 
And so that catapulted him into this, this thing where he began to search and to study numerology. And after many years of personal research, uh, he went public in 1988. This was the year he met Reverend Hazel Castle and he was invited to be a guest on her radio program. His presentation on numerology, and I watched a lot of his uh, interviews last night, me and Daisy, uh, and we watched them together. And, and I, uh, Daisy was riveted. R Daisy is my Chihuahua Terrier uh, dog, and she was riveted. She doesn't usually watch TV with me, but for some reason she liked Reverend, uh, Reverend Wright's voice. So she was looking right at him the whole time. So I'll send, her, send you a picture of her because she's in love with you. Uh, Reverend Dr. Wright. Uh, but he has made this uh, a life calling and he has served as a resource to many human service agencies by conducting seminars and workshops. He has a wide array of clientele who he consults regularly um, at, on a personal level. And it is my great honor and joy and, you know, to meet another kindred along the way. Um, to welcome you, Reverend Dr. Craig Wright, to uh, Life is a Sacred Journey, and Namaste and peace be with you, and I'm so happy you're here. So happy. So welcome. welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. When I listen to that, it's always very humbling to, to, to hear and go back over that, that journey. Um, that was Reverend Hazel Cussell. Oh, Cussell, thank, thank you. you. Is it? And um, she had great faith in me before I even knew it was a gift of mine. When I went on her show, she gave my phone number out of the air. I was shocked. I was shocked. That, but that's how, <laughs> that's how I got started. From people started calling me and, and asking because as you, as you discovered, um, the numbers are, are very accurate. So yeah, I wasn't always Reverend Dr. Craig Wright. I started off as Dr. I started off as Craig Wright. Didn't believe in anything that I couldn't feel, taste, touch. Um, I was studying to become an engineer. Oh, okay. Before my best friend died, so I was well versed in numbers and mathematics, um, but that was the material side. Those were figures. Figures are different from numbers. Uh, Michelle, if I hold up a pen and I say I have one pen, that would be a quantity. Okay. But if I say big pens are number one, that's a quality of being the best. Okay. And that's what clicked. When my best friend passed, as you mentioned, that, that's what clicked. I was able to see, or I was led to understand, I should put, put it that way, the spiritual significance that numbers represented, and it was life changing. So, so you know, I want to talk about that a minute because I realized when I started doing my homework that this is not um, a new uh, science or a new understanding. That if you go back into uh, the uh, cultures of old, numbers were always the Mayans. The the every culture of old used numbers as a means of telling their story and a means of um, looking into the future to say, this is what, what we see in the future based on the numbers and cycles, which, which also fits into to numbers. So just give us a, give the audience here, um, our family members, an understanding of what numerology is so that they can at least understand sort of the foundation of it. Yes, be glad to. Um... We break down the word numerology. You know, ology, of course, is the study of. We have geology, the study of the land. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned astrology, the study of the, the position of planets. Well, numerology is the study of the ancient meaning of numbers. It's numerology has been around. Uh, it's been dated back to 3100 BC. Okay, I didn't know. See that I didn't know. Back, back in the days of. Um, Moses, who wrote the fourth book of the Bible called Numbers. Yeah. Uh, there's a scripture where Moses says, teach us to number our days. That's Psalms 90, verse 12. Uh, back in the days of Jesus, Jesus practiced name changes on his disciples. Um, one of the most famous name changes was when he changed the name of Peter from Simon. 
Simon became Peter. If you look at apply the ancient numerology meaning of numbers, Simon is a number seven, which is a number of faith, wow. the seeker. So he was the first disciple to, to, to declare the Christ. But Christ needed a leader. So the name Peter is a number one. <laughs> Everybody knows what that number means. Number one means the first, the fastest, the top, the best. So he changed his name to Peter. Now, every now and then he called him, if you study the scripture, he would call him Simon every now and then when he slipped. You know, like before the rooster could crow, I don't know the guy. <laughs> he, that was very Simonist. But he got it together and became that rock, Peter. So we see evidence. The most recent evidence of numerology is um, Pythagoras. If you had the Pythagorean theorem in geometry, well, Pythagoras made what's now known as numerology popular. And he studied in the same school as Jesus and Moses, the ancient Egyptian mystery schools and the great temples of the Luxor uh, temple. That's where it was going down back in the day. Um, it's so interesting you say this to me. I don't mean to interrupt you, but you're exciting my, my DNA. It's like, oh my gosh, because when I went to, to Bali, and, and, you know, I, a, a very Muslim country, right? Very Muslim and Buddhist and Christian, okay? And I went to the Holy Temple and to the Holy Springs to, to do, you know, to experience it. And the, the man that was there was a wonderful old sage. And I sat with him for a while. And he said to me, he said, your, your Christian faith wants to take, um, Jesus and just hold tight to him as if he never traveled and came to other places. And he said, we believe in Jesus. He was a Christian. He happened to be a Christian. He said, we believe in Jesus Christ. And then I went to a museum and there Jesus was in, in sitting just like we envision him in Jerusalem and all these places in Bali, like in, in, in Eastern Indian countries, he was there sitting around the people having the same conversations and we hadn't even begun to think about him yet because we didn't know about him until he was in his 30s. Yes, yes. And one I was shocked by that, Dr. Wright. <laughs> it, it, I, I'm sure you just shocked a lot of people by making that revelation. Yeah. Um, when he came back and then he was saying, oh, no, no, this, we're going to stop this eye for eye stuff um, it's because he studied karma in the nations that you just mentioned. So he, he came back and said, if someone slaps you, give them the other cheek. That's how you, that's how you stop it. You know, you're forgiving yourself. That's what he was basically trying to tell people. And he learned that, um, I think that was a Buddhist. Yeah, it was a Buddhist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just so interesting that we want to imprison the spirit in that way that we're not willing to even uh, look at a different horizon. So when you talk about the Jeremiah effect, what does that mean? Okay, the scripture tells us about a prophet. Um, not unlike a lot of prophets of those days, he was a little hesitant because those were the days if you bought, you hear the saying, don't kill the messenger. Well, it came from those days. If you bought brand news, it could be over for you. And so a lot of problems are a little hesitant to deliver bad news. Well, the Jeremiah effect, when Jeremiah was trying to back down from his contract with God, God reminded him, wait a minute, buddy. Before I form you in the womb, we had a contract. So the Jeremiah effect is we're not physical beings who have temporary physical experiences. We are spiritual beings having a temporary physical experience. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we have a contract with God. We are created by the word in the image of God as a spirit. And we have a contract before we come here. We choose our name, our birthday, our parents. I always laugh when I hear people say, well, you can't choose your family. Yes, you can. We sit up, if you will, and we go through the book of lives. This is the Jeremiah effect. Before I formed thee, I knew thee. So we thumb through the book of lives and based metaphysically on our need to learn and grow and progress, we choose a life path. Wow. That's the birthday. 
We choose our parent. We choose our race, our sex, everything down to the last detail based on our needs to learn and grow. Wow. I believe with the first breath, the journey begins. So the Jeremiah effect tells us about the contract and numerology is the tool used for revealing it. The numbers in our birthday reveal God's part of the contract. Our gifts, talents, skills, abilities. If this is a better picture, it's your toolbox. Okay, toolbox. That's God's part of the contract. The numbers in our name, or I should say the letters in our name, which are, can be converted to numbers, okay? A is the first letter, that's a one. Mm -hmm. B is the second letter, that's a number two, real simple. Mm -hmm. In the case of double digit, the letter Z, two plus six is eight. Mm -hmm. So the numbers in our name are our part of the contract. So there's a contract there and numerology helps reveal that. And, Birthday, and your numbers in your name tell you who you are and why you're here. I mean, this is amazing because uh, I have Felicia and my um, numbers and mine came out to 33, master healer and universal service giver. Um, Felicia, I'm not gonna share yours. Well, mate, uh, you write in the chat, Felicia, can I share yours? <laughs> Cause hers is good, it's true. And it's so interesting that it's true. Right. You know? Oh, yes. Yes. Like, as I mentioned before, I did. I was not a believer. I was a mathematician, a technocrat. My desire was to fly aircraft in the U.S. Navy and machine gun people and drop bombs on them in the name of USA. But when my best friend died of a drug overdose and I didn't even know he was using that changed everything. My world was rocked. It was I was broken to the core. And for the first time, I began to emanate to the universe. I can't say praying because I wasn't a believer. I just started emanating to the universe. Why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> Why am I here? And the universe heard me, Michelle, and started speaking to me in the language I understood. So I could no longer deny there was a higher, a higher being who had in charge of my life yeah. And my friend did not die from a drug overdose. He fulfilled his contract because there's no greater love that a friend gives his life. He mm -hmm. fulfilled his contract, returned back to his original form, and like the Manchurian candidate, lit my fire. <laughs> so now, I've been, ever since then, I've been telling people about, uh, hey, man, this the letters in your name that tell you why you're here. It's your calling. The numbers in your birthday. We come with an owner's manual. People laugh. They think it's crazy. They think it's funny. I thought I was crazy. I know. Um, I was going to say, you probably questioned <laughs> yourself a little bit. Yeah, because that's what we do when something is not quite what we call normal. Exactly. So I began to imitate again. Well, now I'm praying. Now I'm praying because I know there's a force out there. Why did you give me this to make me look like a fool? Nobody believes me. People think I've lost my mind. In fact, people think I'm the devil now. I was just yeah. going to say that to you. I was just going to say that I'm sure a lot of people converted this into demonic something. And that's when God started, took me to the scriptures took me to the Library of Congress, well, put me on my path, and I discovered I was a number seven. Mm. And my job as a seven was to research, <laughs> analyze, discover, dust the, off old books, open it up, find the truth, and share it with others. And I said, oh, my goodness. Yes. And I'm on I the path. Oh I'm my on my gosh. journey. And, you know, and you can tell because it was a journey. The thing that I tell people when they see me bubble up with emotion and thank you for honoring me with that, um, with because emotions are the uh, to me, to me. And I know some people don't feel this way, but it's our, it's your true self, your true spirit showing through or shining out. So because this stuff 
Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> well, but all this stuff that I have before that you see before you, this is a shell. This has nothing to do with, um, it's a nice shell. I like it. Thank you very much. But at the end of the day, when I shake it, it is my heart. It is my spirit, how I, I show up every day with other people that's way more important because they're going to one day forget what I look like. But when Maya Angelou says it really well, but they're, they're going to always remember how Michelle Pope made them feel. Wow. They're not going to remember. There's going to come a point where they're not going to remember what color my hair was and all of that, unless you put a photo in front of them, because we're talking down the road. But somebody will say, you know, Michelle made me laugh. Michelle made me feel accepted. Michelle made me feel loved. And that is way more important than whether you remember my physicality or anything like that, because this is just a passing moment. Exactly. And that's what I'm getting from this. But now I want you to tell them a little bit about what you found about um, yours truly here. Because you- the Number I, 33. Yeah. The number 33. Um, numbers again, are symbols for spiritual qualities. Musicians understand what I'm saying. They know that they use letters for notes and numbers for timing, okay? A, B, C, those are notes, symbols for vibrations. Yes. So the 33 is called the master healer and the master of universal service, okay? The 33 is the third master number. Double digits of master numbers, 11, 22, 33, up to 99. The third master number is considered an upper octave of Venus, a love vibration raised to the highest level possible, compassion for others. It's called the Christ vibration because the word savior is a number 33 vibration. If lived up to its ideal, the number 33 will not be lowered to the number six. Three and three is six, which is the number of service, which indicates the greatest among us, the six, okay? The 33 is the highest of all the sixes. So that's your energy. Why did I say be careful not to play the martyr? It came from the story about the six that was encapsulated of the story of Christ when he turned six vats of water into one. Could have been any number, any number. He had the power to do 3,000, but it was six, okay? That's the rescue number. He saved the host. He was really getting, getting rough for him. In mm -hmm. fact, they say the second line was better than the first, which wasn't the custom. The custom was to get people drunk, then bring out the vinegar, get rid of the old stuff. <laughs> but this wine was better than the first. So the guy went from being a zero to a hero. So that six is the symbol for the rescuer. Oh. And the 33 is the number of the martyr. God. So that's why I had to inform you of that. You have to learn to let go and let God. You can't save everybody. I tell right. my 33 who were my clients, you came with a metaphysical rope on your shoulder about 50 feet long, okay? So you're always on the listen for a call for help. <laughs> That's why you're here. When you hear the call, you find someone who's fallen off the edge of life, you throw out that rope, grab a hold, you got it, you pull them up, dust them off, give them that finger wag. That's that parent energy in the six. <laughs> Yes, yes. I told you not to get too close. I told to you there. not to get it's slippery over here. That's your job. Here's the danger. You got a 50 foot rope. One day you hear a call from someone who's a hundred feet deep. You arrive on the scene, throw your rope out. It's going to fall short. They start jumping. They want out of the mess. If you start leaning over the hole, you know, just to get a little more length on that rope and they grab it, guess what? Plunk, in you go. They're going to stand on your shoulder, step on your head, get out of the hole and leave you there listening to footprints in the distance as they walk away. I'm too late. You've already had the experience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm a good learner. I'm a good learner. The experience broke my heart 
quite honestly. Um, it was somebody who I felt I had been, I had done all the, the empathy, compassion, walked with them. They even said so. And you when can. the moment came where um, the, what do you call it? The crowd mentality of, um, because I'm also a truth giver. I, you know, people ask me questions and I always say to them, are you sure? <laughs> because it's not being mean, I'm not being mean, but if you ask me for my opinion, and I do it always with love and kindness, at least I attempt to do, to, to attempt to, but I'm not gonna lie to you if, you know, and that's what happened. And, and the answer was not what the person wanted to hear. And, and, um, and it turned into a really bad fall. But once I got out of the hole, I figured out how to climb and get my little scratch my way back up to the top to 50 feet. Thank you for that picture and grab onto the rope that they left behind because they were in such a hurry to get away. I said to myself, self, you need to have, you need to know when to let go. And you also need balance because sometimes it's like, oh, this person needs and I'm here. I'm, I ain't even in the picture and I'm floundering. I'm tired. I'm emotionally drained. You just tipped me in, into a place because, because I give so much, there are times that I have to do what I call my bear moment where I go and hibernate. I turn off the cell phone. I don't talk to nobody, v email, nothing. I go and hibernate ocean hiking away from people altogether. And I have found in the last 20 years that has saved my soul and I find I get more joy out of my service. Awesome. That's because when it becomes an obligation, it, it's not good. Exactly, exactly. So well, you, you know me. <laughs> The getting away, that's number seven energy. On the seventh day, God rested. So the sevens need time alone by themselves. And that's the name Pope. The name Pope is P is a seven because it's the 16th letter of the alphabet. O is a six. It's the 15th. Got another seven. And E is the fifth. So seven plus six is 13. Yep. Plus seven again is 20. E is a five. I'm sorry. It's the fifth letter. 25, 2 plus 5 is 7. Real simple, space on the alphabet, convert, add it up, reduce it to a single digit or a master number. And that's the seven energy. That's the seeker in you, the seeker who's seeking out truth. Now, the other part that you just mentioned, <laughs> where you're saying, I tell people the truth. If you don't want to know, don't ask me. That's coming from your vow total. Okay. Hmm. Um, the vowel total in your first name is a 15, I-E-A. That's real easy because all of those are single digits. <laughs> I is the ninth letter, E is the fifth, A is the first. That adds up to 15. Pope, which we just did, okay? O was a six and E is a five, that's 11. 15 and 11 add up to 26 and two plus six is eight. That's the number I'm trying to get to. Eight stands for, as it is above, so it is below. Love. So eight can channel the power of God to the earthly plane. So what I'm trying to say is, when someone asks you something, you don't sugarcoat it. Okay. You'll give it to them straight. <laughs> um, but because of the 33, which is your gift, it's exactly what they need. So God will send you people who need a slap in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, and it's interesting because I have somebody in my life that does that for me. <laughs> I have an accountability partner. Um, um, I learned about that a long time ago. And so this person is my spiritual accountability partner and they give it to me straight, you know, and they, okay. they lift me up when I need to be lifted up. Cause you know, uh, I also, I get I come out of I come out of the world with a little little some scars sometimes. 
Yes, the 26 is the number of forgiveness. The, the eight also means what goes around comes around. So it's about karma. Yeah. So in this lifetime, you are practicing forgiveness almost constantly. Yes. Yes. But I also think when you said I was an old soul and I started thinking about that, that there has been levels of 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 understanding and 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 we're we're talking universal now my friends uh universal understanding that i have evolved from a place of having to forgive myself and 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 when that happened because it happened in this in this uh manifestation of myself there was an opening and it and when it happened, it was it was it was like I couldn't believe it and I couldn't quite understand it. And all of a sudden I became a seeker, like passionately, ferociously. And that was in my 30s. At 31 years old, after I gave birth to my son, all of a sudden there was something that happened in me that changed the trajectory of my life forever. Awesome. And, and I don't know if it's because of his soul coming through me. I don't know. Um, but well, I do. With, with, we can reflect again on your birthday. Yeah. The, um, the number nine, or I should say the month, governs the first 25 to 27 um, years of our life. Oh, okay. okay. So it's like an umbrella or to use a weather report, a, a pressure system, high pressure, low pressure, you know, we expect rain and sun based on the pressure system that we're. So in numerology, the energy, the spiritual energy is revealed by the month for the first 27 years. That's the number nine. So it's like doom and gloom. The number nine is about Job. Job was a number nine, okay? So you're learning, you're growing through loss, experiences, you're developing faith in the universe, um, growing up quickly. That's what the number nine does. I did should. grow up quickly. Okay. So after that, that first 27 years, when the click came, you moved to the number three. Yeah. It's amazing. The story of Christ is about the number three. He was sought by three wise men. I already mentioned uh, Simon Peter who denied him three times before the rooster could crow. And of course, we celebrate Isaac because he arose on the third day. Third day. So let's see what he said about, you know, if, if, if the three is about the Christ, what did he say? He says, I am here that you will have life and have it more abundantly. So at that switch, at that age that you just mentioned, you went from the nine of selfless giving, letting go, uh, growing, developing your tolerance for others into great joy, spirituality, great abundance, and a spiritual awakening. The I had a spiritual, yes, Dr. Yes. 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 Prior, yes. I tell people yes. all the time, if you had known me in my 20s, you would have ran from me <laughs> because I was vengeful. I didn't like many people. I was about, because I had a good education and I was making good money and I was all about that. And it was like church and all that other stuff. Yeah, good, whatever, whatever, whatever. And, 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 and they look at me in astonishment because they know me as, I, as this manifestation. So they don't, can't even imagine that person. I, I always say they, when, when, when I reflect on the change, the metamorphosis, they knew you in your caterpillar days <laughs> before you became the butterfly. <laughs> before the butterfly, yes. And it was not good because I didn't even like me. Um, and when I tell people that I didn't even like me, but I didn't know, I didn't know how to change it at that point. And I didn't change anything. Like I said, it wasn't like a, the lightning came into my room or the, I had a warming of spirit or anything like that. But it was this moment where you realize that you have changed. You, you have that pivotal moment where you go, oh my gosh. I'm a very different person. You don't, it's, it's not like I had a self-help book and I wrote it all down. No, 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 I do that now, but I didn't know that stuff then. And, and I was like, oh, hmm, 
you're not the same person. You're not mad at this. You would have had a fit at this <laughs> back in the day. How come? And then you begin to understand because you ask the questions. I want to ask another question before we have to leave because I, I always love talking to people and I always run out of time. If a person wants to, to understand numerology, are they saying that they do not believe in whatever uh, denominational practice or uh, faith that they believe in? Are they turning their backs on that? Um, quite the contrary. In fact, <clears throat> numerology is what led me to the Bible. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> it's quite the contrary. See that once I studied, I understood that information about numbers is contained in the scripture. Uh, for example, we, we read about 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was tempted 40 days, 40 nights. Um, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. The children of, of Israel wandered 40 years in the desert. So what is it about this number 40 that's in the, the Bible and the Torah? Well, four stands for work and order. And zero in the beginning is a symbol for God. Mm -hmm. So every time you see the number 40, it means God is establishing a new order. Well, I discovered the number 40 first. And then when I was reading the Bible, I said, oh, my goodness. Every time the 40 shows up, this is what's going on in the Bible. So, no, you're not turning away from it. You are getting closer to it. Um, as I mentioned before, the fourth book of the Bible written by Moses. It's called numbers. Yeah, yeah. Come on now, okay? Um, There's nothing more. Yeah, it sure, <laughs> is. it sure is. We don't study it a lot, but it definitely <laughs> is um, there. And it's also um, in everything that we do as a measurement. Of, of, of all the things that we, birth dates, uh, legacies, uh, uh, ancestral stuff, numbers, it's, it's all there and it has meaning. You know, I, I, I tell people, if you want to study the written word, read the Bible, read the Quran, read the Bhagavad Gita, read the Circle 7, uh, whatever, however your heart is guided. But whatever your denomination is, if you want to study the living word, you kind of go back to the ancient science of numerology where all the great masters study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have classes that people can participate in um, and they are they can schedule that through calendry.com um, slash numerology services. And they can also go to your website, which is um, could you recite that? It's What's Craig. That? The website is Craig E. Wright. That's www.craig, the letter E w-r-i-g-h-t dot com. And uh, yeah. most of, <laughs> interesting, your question is interesting because most of my students have been pastors of very large churches. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. I can see that. I can see that. And, and, and <laughs> I might become one. And then you have a book um, that says It All Adds Up by Dr. Craig Wright. And you, it's an e-book. And, so, and, and so people can purchase that also. And they can find the link on your website. Yes, they can. I saw that. So please do that. And then there's a class series that is coming up if it hasn't already a start already started. And it had uh, gifts of the spirit, which we're always wanting. Uh, your calling. Why are you here? Know thyself. Um, I love this one. Seasons, universal and personal energy patterns, seasons of life. I use that terminology a lot. Um, compatibility, how to enhance stuff and, and not, you know, because there's some people that it's nice to be a friend with, but you shouldn't be in a relationship with them. They shouldn't <laughs> live with you. Let me put it like that. <laughs> and pinnacles, challenges, and karma, turning obstacles into stepping stones. So those are, are, are some of the awakening class series that you can participate in. You can also um, have a one-on-one -on -one uh, with Reverend Dr. Uh, Wright, and and you can do that by also going to the uh, website and you know signing up and going on calendar and setting up a time to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, with with Dr. Wright. It is 
important that we look at all things. And, and it is important that we seek the knowledge that we want to live our lives by and not be told what things are. Because when we do that, we become very disappointed because it may be just like I tell you, eat the meat and throw away the bones when it comes to me, because I'm learning too. I'm on a, on a path of elevation as so are you. So we may not always agree on stuff, but that doesn't mean we have to hate. And that doesn't mean we have to bully. And that doesn't mean we have to frighten each other just because we have differences of opinion. So I want to thank Reverend uh, uh, Dr. Craig Wright for coming to Life is a Sacred Journey and sharing your, um, your life journey with us, for sharing what you have learned on your sacred journey, because while we all have one, it is unique to us. And um, thank you for inspiring me, um, uh, because you have been the third voice in, in, and again, all people who I didn't know before they said what they said to me. So you're the third. Um, and I, I know that the universe speaks to us in threes. <laughs> I know that. I knew that coming into this. And so I just want to thank you for reminding me, reminding me of, of my life purpose, because sometimes, and, and, and particularly in this moment, in this space and time, in this season of my life, I'm going through some things behind the scenes that, that I'm, I'm questioning. Um, if I may. Please. For all things, there is a season. The universal season is the number six. You find that by adding two plus zero plus 22, we get 24. Two plus four is six. When we add that to your birthday, your birthday is a 12. Six and 12 is 18. One and eight is nine. You're in an ending cycle. Things are coming to a close. You're coming, you're wrapping up a nine year cycle this year. So things are terminating. People are leaving your space. There may be some things you wanna hold on to, but if it's not for your universal good and progression, it's gone. The number nine is found up information in the story of Job. I I, I, you can't make this stuff up. You can't. You, you can't. Lost make it up. J is a one, O is a six, B is a two, that's a nine. So, under a nine cycle, and it's all, it's, it's, we're, we're halfway through it. Yeah. Okay. So, Yay. almost <laughs> over. <laughs> but September is a nine month in a nine year. September is, if you will, a metaphysical screen that anything that is no longer useful for your evolutionary progress, it will not pass through that screen. I don't want to leave you on that note. Next year <laughs> is a number one year. New beginnings, fresh starts, and the things you've been waiting to, to manifest, they're coming in. And you know what? I, I feel it. I feel it. And I feel number it. One year. Yeah, I feel the, I feel the, yeah. Everything you just said, because things are falling off that I didn't think that would. And, and, and for the first time in my life, I'm okay with it. Like I, I used to run to make it better. And now I'm like, nah, you know, we've had it. Or it's been or whatever. And um, opening up to a new, a new way. I will be in contact with you uh, because I want you to want you to know of my journey. Please uh, know that again, this is uh, life is a sacred journey is a platform where we're just helping people be their best selves and and to really look deeper than what other people have said they are. And th and in light of that, um, Dr. Wright, I know you join me in this. We always end the show by, by speaking out to those individuals who have been damaged so much or they feel that their souls can no longer go on. And, and you know, maybe that's not your purpose. It, it might be something happening in your life that's knocking you down somebody else, right? And so the 988 suicide hotline number 1-800-273-8255 is still up and running, but 988, they made it easy for us. 
um, call somebody and reach out to somebody because you know you, you your time may you still got some stuff to give you know and and this world is a hard this meta, this this uh, world out here this this physicality is hard to get through it is hard to get through but there are people like Dr. Wright like myself like like people on that hotline who say, no, I'm going to talk to somebody and help them come back to, to a place of, of health, uh, spiritual health, because that's what it's all about. So hang in there, folks. And as I always end this, Dr. Wright, please stay on for a minute. And, and we thank you. We thank you so much for coming to Life is a Sacred Journey. And we want you to come yeah. back and visit with us. All yeah. right, my friends, it's a weekend. You know what I say to you? Saturday is not a day for you to run around doing all your chores. Saturday is a day to take out and take care of yourself. Go for a massage. Go hug a tree. Pet a cat. Definitely pet a dog. You know how I feel about dogs. Go pet a dog. Look in a dog's eye. Whew. You're, you're going to see something in there. Hug yourself. Tell yourself that you matter. Love yourself the way you love others. And if you don't love others enough, then love them better so you can love yourself better, okay? Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy who you are and who you were created to be. Thank you so much for coming to Life is a Sacred Journey. I hope you got a little bit of food here today and that you'll share it not only in your own spirit, but with someone else. Check out uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Craig Wright's uh, website. Take a class, set a one-to-one, and, um, and maybe explore something a little bit different about yourself. Be well, everybody. And I thank you so much for being here at Life is a Sacred Journey. We couldn't do it without you. Peace. Mm -hmm.